leaning edge wing extensions, and outward canted tail fins stabilize airflow, while the wide range of motion in the ailerons, flaps, and tail planes give the Hornet unparalleled pitch and roll control. The F-A-18 is so maneuverable, it's the jet of choice for the Navy's Blue Angels demonstration squadron. These daring pilots have been flying the F-A-18 Hornet since 1986. The jet's speed and handling characteristics have allowed the team to add new maneuvers to their program. The F-A-18 can turn on a very tight radius and perform rapid rolls, all while also displaying the best slow speed ability of any Navy jet. But the Hornet's maneuverability takes a physical toll on the pilot. Its high speed turns can create over seven and a half Gs. Under this stress, the average pilot feels almost 1,500 pounds of downward pressure on his body. To prepare for the rigors of flying an F-A-18, pilots at Lemoore Naval Air Station undergo intense training. One of the most grueling stages takes place in the centrifuge. So what we have today is a very typical class for centrifuge-based flight environment training, or CFET. We have 10 students. They are new F-A-18 pilots. They are winged. They are already pilots, but they are just beginning to learn how to fly the F-A-18. The goal is to teach the trainee how to handle the high Gs while pursuing an enemy or bandit. The centrifuge contains an exact replica of the pilot's controls. During this training, the pilot is actually controlling the device from inside of it. It's a 90-second profile. It's extremely challenging as the pilot has to go ahead, track the bandit, and at the same time, perfect this technique to enable him to go as high as 7.5 Gs. Failing to master the anti-G maneuvers can be disastrous. If at the point that the pilot begins to experience gray out and he does not correct the situation by improving his anti-G straining maneuver, this can progress to G-lock, which is gravity-induced loss of consciousness. During a G-lock event, the pilot is completely unconscious. Typically, it's about 12 seconds, but it can be as long as 45 seconds. Probably even more dangerous than the G-lock is the A-lock, or the almost loss of consciousness. After an A-lock, the pilot, although having never lost consciousness, is completely confused, disoriented, and has no sense of spatial awareness. The lights are on, but nobody's home, and this is extraordinarily dangerous. The high Gs pulled by the F-A-18 make time spent in the gondola critical. A lot of the training, the survival training the pilots get is only if something goes horribly, horribly wrong. But for an F-A-18 pilot, the skills and techniques that they're going to learn here today are things that they will use every single time they fly their aircraft. Go ahead and step up here, sir. To counter high Gs, okay, pilots flex their core muscles and uh, exhale sharply in what's called a hick maneuver for the sound the pilot makes. They also wear specially engineered G suits. What the G suit does is when you're pulling Gs, basically it's pushing all the blood to the lower parts of your bodies, the lower extremities, such as your thighs, your calves, and your abdomen and it brings the oxygenated blood away from your brain. So what this does is create pressure around the biggest muscles and also incorporated with the hick maneuver, the squeezing of your lower extremities, your biggest muscles being the thighs and abdomen. It pushes all that blood back up and keeps you from passing out. I'm just gonna have you sit here, sir. I'm gonna take a look at your AGSM. Okay. Um, so I know what's gonna happen inside the gondola. This FA-18 pilot in training is about to undergo the centrifuge's ACM profile. It's by far the most grueling. He practices his anti-G straining maneuver one last time. Any questions? No. Looks good. Okay. okay. And I'll get somebody to put you in. Great. Go ahead and follow me, please. Personnel in a control room monitor his breathing and blood pressure levels and watch for G-lock and A-lock symptoms. Con check, please. Loud and clear, help me. Read you the same, loud and clear. Restraint system? All four locks. But even with all the safety checks, once the door closes, he's on his own. G-suit. Plugged in, comfort zipper zip, no air first drive. All right, pilot is clean, gondola is clean. Yes. It's going to be about 15 seconds to you feel 
It start moving, Brad? The initial stages of the profile hover between five and six Gs, with breaks of minimum G tolerance in between. Then the pilot is taken to the FA-18's maximum G-force level. Rest up as much as possible. This next peak is 7.5. I want you to pull this tip back and get on top of the Gs as quick as possible. Bites on, get a good prep, 7.5. Keep it in, keep it in, bury that stick back. Three, two, get him in the middle, sir. Hold it off, sir. Lock it off. Seal it off, sir. Three, coming down this time, follow him down. Today, the pilot maintains consciousness, but even the toughest aviators will feel the effects for as long as 12 hours, and this trainee will have to endure at least two more profiles before he's certified. Yeah, you can really feel like all the pressure going like out of your head and chest, down into your legs, and you start straining, you know, you're, you can see the lights start to come back on a little bit, but uh, to keep working that hard to see is really tough. In an F-18 Hornet, it's really important to be able to understand how this training works um, using the G-suit and the centrifuge and uh, understand how your body reacts to G's because uh, you could be fighting somebody one-on-one -on -one in a real dynamic environment where you're pulling a lot of G's and trying to look out over your shoulders and uh, maintain a good look at so you can see the bandit. Or if you're coming off a target and uh, you have to snatch on a bunch of G's real quick and you need to know how to prepare your body so you don't black yourself out or go unconscious. To maintain control during the most difficult maneuvers, the FA-18 contains a computer-assisted fly-by-wire system. Some pilots say it makes operating a plane more like a video game than traditional flying. But its impact on safety and handling is very real. The F-18 is a fly-by-wire aircraft. In other words, as a pilot in the cockpit, you are merely a voting member of the flight control system. Two flight control computers analyze inputs, digital inputs from the cockpit, uh, from stick and rudder inputs, uh, and then transfer that information to hydraulic actuators back here uh, in the flight control surfaces to give you what you want. Merely a left turn isn't like in a Cessna where the ailerons, you know, rise to meet you. In other words, a left turn here, this aileron's going to come up and that aileron's going to go down and we're going to turn left. Well, that not, may not necessarily be the case in an F-18. The flight control computers are going to say, okay, he's going this fast and he wants to go left, so I'm going to move these surfaces this way to give him what he wants. The FA-18's fly-by-wire control takes the pilot's stick and rudder movements and interprets them. Separate computing systems evaluate the input and instantaneously decide what surfaces to move. If more than two of the computers fail, the pilot can manually take back some critical controls. If the pilot does lapse into G-lock during a maneuver, the FA-18's flight system takes over, automatically leveling out the jet's path through the air. This highly advanced flight system is just one of the striking contrasts between the FA-18 and other carrier-based fighters past and present. Perhaps the most legendary is the F-14 Tomcat. Compared to the Tomcat, the smaller, leaner Hornet almost looks fragile. But the FA-18 is anything but dainty. Since its first deployment, this powerful jet has flown thousands of successful combat missions. One of the FA-18's greatest strengths is its reliability. The FA-18 contains 50% fewer parts than the F-14. And fewer parts means the plane is easier to maintain. One floor down from the flight deck is the hangar deck. This is where planes go when they are in need of work. Off the hangar deck, crews specialize in getting grounded planes back into action. Right now we're back here in the jet shop where I've got about 40 people that do work on the various engines that we have the capability to repair. This engine behind me here is an F-404. It's the engine that's out of the uh, F-A-18 Hornet. Uh, we've done some maintenance to this. It's in a modular format where uh, we can remove any of the modules on the engine, replace them, uh, run the engine across the test cell, and then it's ready to be issued back out to the squadrons again. 
So these gents are making that ready to go. The F-A-18 has proven even more dependable than the Navy hoped, especially when compared to the F-14 Tomcat. The Tomcats, as, as you well know, are, are, are aging, and they're, they're aging rather fastly, so they require more maintenance man hours per flight hour than, say, the Hornet. The Hornet, on the other hand, is, is still relatively young, comparatively speaking, and uh, there aren't as many maintenance man hours required. Tomcat maintenance squads must work almost four times as many hours to maintain their aging aircraft. 